most respected Prime Minister of India, Mr. Narendra Bhai Modi, International Olympic Committee President, Mr. Thomas Bach, distinguished guest and dear friends. Namaskar, swagatam. Welcome to all of you. Respected Pradhan Mantri ji, on behalf of the International Olympic Committee and the sporting fraternity in India and the world, I warmly welcome you. <clears throat> Respected Prime Minister, we are filled with immense joy and gratitude that you have joined us today. You are the leader of the world's largest democracy, architect of new India. Your support to sport has made this session in India a reality. IOC President Mr. Thomas Bach, members and delegates of the IOC from over 80 countries and friends of the Olympic movement. It is an absolute honor for us to host this historic IOC session in India after 40 years. And in Mumbai for the first time ever. Amchi Mumbai, our Mumbai welcomes all of you. In our culture, we say, Atiti Devo Bhava. It means, our guest is God. You all have arrived in India at an auspicious time, on the eve of Navratri, a vibrant Hindu festival celebrated with song, dance, and festivity that signifies the triumph of good over evil. My dear friends and colleagues, in this meeting of the IOC, I see the confluence of two wonderful forces. One is the Olympic movement, which unites humanity and transcends all national, racial, religious, and linguistic barriers. The other is India, the world's largest democracy, as the host of this meeting. The mantra and motto of our 5,000-year-old civilization is Vasudeva Kutumbakam, which our Prime Minister declared as the theme at India's presidency of the G20 summit last month. It means the entire world is one family. Today, more than ever, our world needs to reunite in fraternity and solidarity. This cannot happen on battlefields. It can only happen on sports fields. In all of human history, there has never been a more magical force to promote peace, friendship, health, fitness, motivation, and joy than sport. Sport energizes us, unites us, and binds us together in the most beautiful ways. Friends, India was always a great cultural and spiritual power. Now, under the visionary leadership of Prime Minister Modi ji, India is a rising economic power, technological power, a power in sustainable development, a philanthropic power, and also a rising sporting power. Our young girls and boys are exhibiting incredible talent in diverse sporting arenas around the world. Most recently, they have made all of us proud at the Asian Games in China. Many of them come from very humble backgrounds, and I'm happy to say that some of them are in our midst today. 
Let's give them a round of applause. In conclusion, my dear friends from the IOC, let me say this with great humility. India's pot potential is limitless. In the years to come, young Indians will excel globally in every field of human endeavor, including sport. This is a collective dream of 1.4 billion Indian hearts. It is also the collective determination of 1.4 billion Indian minds. <clears throat> Children are our hope. Children are our future. Today, we pledge to nurture and empower our 250 million school-going children through the Olympic values of friendship, excellence, and respect, not just in Indian cities, but also in the small towns and remotest villages of India. This meeting of the IOC is truly a defining moment in the history of sport in India. Today, let us recommit ourselves to the guiding principles of the Olympic movement and work towards Olympics of all, Olympics by all, and Olympics for all. Our deliberations and discussions over the next three days will inspire and influence millions of young children in India and all over the world to embrace the transformational power of sport. Our children are the ones who will help to shape a better, brighter, kinder, greener, happier, and more harmonious world. A shared future that unites all the 8 billion people on our beautiful and bountiful planet. Dear friends, today we are about to witness history. When our Prime Minister Narendra Bhai Modi declares the 141st IOC session open, India will once again open its arms to the world, not just as a host, but as a torchbearer for the Olympic movement. On that note, I wish you all a very wonderful session and a very happy Navratri. Thank you. Dhanyavad. Jai Hind. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, may I now request the President of the International Olympic Committee, Mr. Thomas Bach, to address this gathering. Your Excellency Narendra Modi, Prime Minister of uh, India. Our dear IOC colleague and friend and wonderful host, Nita Ambani. Dear fellow IOC members. Dear President of the Indian Olympic Association, P.T. Usha. Dear Presidents and friends from the international federations and national Olympic committees. Dear Olympic friends, namaste. It is a great honor to welcome you all to the 141st IOC session in Mumbai. We are so pleased to be in India, a country on the rise in so many respects, including in Olympic sport. Your presence here today, dear Prime Minister, is a testimony to this growing importance of Olympic sport in your wonderful country. This is why I'm offering you a very warm welcome.
Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister, for gracing us with your presence. Apka bohot, bohot suagat. India is a truly inspiring place to hold our IOC session. A country that combines a splendid history and a dynamic present with a vigorous confidence in the future. Let me express our heartfelt thanks and gratitude to our gracious host, our dear colleague and friend, Nita Ambani, for welcoming us so warmly in this truly impressive setting. Already during our short term here, we could get a first impression of the excellent ways you, Nita, are promoting sport and athletes in India. What you have achieved in both business and sport is simply remarkable. Through your Reliance Foundation, you are bringing the Olympic values to millions of students, giving them the opportunity to build their lives in and through sport. You are spreading the Olympic spirit across your vast country, and in this way, you are making the world a better place through sport. Danyavat, Nita. Another illustration of the growing Olympic spirit is the outstanding performance of these Indian athletes at the Asian Games in Hangzhou. Congratulations to India on its record-breaking medal hall. This is something that the entire Olympic community in India can be very proud of. In this respect, I would also like to congratulate the Olympic Council of Asia under the leadership of acting President Randir Singh and, of course, the Chinese hosts for the once more brilliant organization of these Asian Games. At this session, we will have a discussion which may give another boost to this growth here in India. When we speak about a certain sport, which I heard enjoys a certain level of popularity here. Cricket. Our thanks also go to the Indian Olympic Association and its president, P.T. Usha, for the warm hospitality with which they have welcomed us. This IOC session should give you at the IOA a timely impulse on your journey of change and reform of Indian sport in every respect. India, with its dynamic and forward-looking young population, provides an appropriate setting for our IOC mission, because we are here to chart the course for the future of our Olympic movement. Therefore, I do not want to dwell too much on the past. Let us turn to the future. In this future, the Olympic Games will likely become more inclusive, featuring a broader range of sports and athletes, and promoting diversity and gender equality. The Olympic movement may also adapt to changing societal values addressing issues such as athlete mental health and social justice, and striving to be a force for positive change on a global scale. Ultimately, the future of the Olympic Games promises to be a compelling fusion of tradition and progress, maintaining its status as a unifying global event while adapting to the changing values and expectations of the modern world. This 
very convincing analysis was uh, obviously written by someone very intelligent and visionary. So it cannot be me. Who else do you think the author might be? Sorry, for once, it's not Pierre de Coubertin. What you just heard was generated by AI, artificial intelligence. I'm using this example to make it clear that our continued success depends on how we embrace the ever accelerating development of technical te technology and in particular AI. This makes our Olympic Agenda 2020 imperative change or be changed even more urgent. And I'm very grateful to you, Mr. Prime Minister, that we had the opportunity to exchange on this uh, right now in a very inspiring way. Every challenge comes with opportunities and risks. We need to seize these opportunities and we need to manage these risks. Allow me to give you some examples which I envision in this respect. AI has the potential to revolutionize the training of the athletes. Training programs for athletes will be developed by AI. This will offer the athletes an extremely individualized training plan, drawing on every intimate detail of the athlete's physical and mental conditions to optimize their performance. But what does it mean for the protection of all these intimate data? What will this mean for the role of a human coach? AI has the potential to revolutionize judging and refereeing. In some sports, you can already see the beginning. For the football fans among us, I just say VAR. For the tennis players, Hawkeye. What will AI mean for other sports where until now human judgment is deciding over victory or defeat? Gymnastics, figure skating, boxing come to my mind. And of course, the most illustrious examples of all, fencing. In all these and many other sports, the big question is, will AI replace or support the human referee? AI has the potential to revolutionize the organization of the Olympic Games. As we all know, the Olympic Games are the most complex event in the world. AI will help to reduce, streamline and optimize the work of organizing committees in all aspects of planning and running the games, down to the smallest detail. Running the Olympic Village more efficiently, managing spectator flows, transportation and venues, the list goes on. And all of this will make the organization extremely efficient. But do we really want to lose the human touch? Will this diminish the Olympic spirit? How can efficiency and the human spirit be reconciled? AI has the potential to revolutionize sports broadcasting. The Olympic Games Paris 2024 will be the last Olympic Games 
of the pre-AI era. At the latest, by the time of the Olympic Games Los Angeles 2028, you will need far fewer people to produce and broadcast much higher quality content. What will this mean for the broadcast center of the Olympic Games? Will we still need one? AI has the potential to revolutionize the spectator experience. Augmented and virtual reality are already changing now how fans consume sport. AI is going to accelerate and enhance this. This spectator experience will be dramatically more immersive and more customized to the individual. In the end, every spectator can be the director of their own viewing experience. Will spectators still look for the experience together in a stadium? Or will they prefer to enjoy it just by themselves at home? Will there still be the collective memory of the iconic sporting moments that live in the hearts of generations of sports fans like us? These are just a few features of this AI future. Over the past year, I have delved into literature and asked experts to find out what opportunities AI will bring to sport. After reading countless articles and books and speaking with them, some of the brightest minds, I can tell you not one of them is at this moment thinking about the impact of AI on sport. Here is our opportunity. If we are starting this discussion now, we can still contribute to shape this AI future for sport. As we did with Olympic Agenda, we can change before we are being changed. If we do not address this issue now, then the purely technological and commercial interests will come over us like a tsunami. To seize this opportunity, it needs a change in mindset. The younger generation has a completely new way of thinking. They are living digital lives right now. We must not ignore their thinking if we do not want to jeopardize our own future. We must empower them to guide us with their young mindset. We have to be in the driver's seat. We have to devise a holistic analysis of the opportunities and risks of AI and then take action immediately. I am happy to inform you that this work is already underway. If things go well, you may see some first consequences of this already in Paris. And you will learn about it tomorrow during our session. For the medium to long-term future, our newly established AI working group of experts will guide us. They have the task to prepare an extensive overview of the opportunities and risks of AI for the Olympic movement, going far beyond what I have just tried to outline. The imperative of our Olympic agenda is change or be changed. 
Another important principle is sport needs to go where the people are. This is true for both worlds, the real and the digital one. Today, sport has to compete for the time and attention of young people. Therefore, we have to reach out to the youth where they are in this digital world. This is not just a technological imperative. This is also a demographic imperative. The launch of the Olympic Channel in the framework of Olympic Agenda 2020 was our first step in this direction. This has proven to be very successful. Today, we can be very proud that our digital platform, olympics.com, has seen hundreds of millions of unique users since the beginning of the IOC digital journey, with an all-time high of about 200 million unique users only during the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020. Also on social media, we have seen significant growth with 110 million followers across our channels and a monthly average of half a billion social media engagement. Industry leaders are noticing our progress. One example is that we were just now awarded with the YouTube Creator Award joining the elite club of their most popular channels. Another dimension of this digital revolution is esports. There are three billion people playing esports and gaming around the world. It is estimated that over 500 million of them are interested specifically in e-sports, which includes virtual sports and sports simulations. What is even more relevant to us, a majority of them are under the age of 34. This is why we took the strategic decision to engage with e-sports in a holistic way. We chose an approach that would allow us to be active in the esports space while staying true to our values that have guided us for over a century. With respect to esports, our values are and remain the red line that we will not cross. Our crystal clear position is gaining more and more respect also in the esports community. One of the leading publishers even adapted their popular game to conform fully with our Olympic values so that players shot at targets, not at people. Our first approach to this community was the organization of the Esports Forum 2018 in Lausanne. Next, we set up an esport liaison group to have a platform to engage with all the esports stakeholders. Following this, we developed the Olympic Virtual Series in 2021, our first pilot venture in esports. Building on the learnings from this Olympic virtual series, we then launched the Olympic Esports Week in Singapore earlier this year. In Singapore, we saw proof that our holistic approach is working. We successfully brought together the Olympic and the esports communities. A highlight was the thrilling live finals created in collaboration with IFs and publishers. Over 130 players from across the globe came together to compete in the Olympic spirit on the global stage in 10 mixed gender category events. Players were cheered on by a full house of fans 
with all the action streamed online. Overall, the Olympic eSports series attracted over 500,000 unique participants. The Olympic eSports series generated more than 6 million views of live action overall channels with 75% of views from people aged 13 to 14. This was a promising start, but it is just that, a start. It is like in any sport, after even a promising start, the real race still lies ahead. To compete successfully in this race, I have asked our new IOC Esports Commission to study the creation of Olympic Esports Games. AI and Esports, these are our two opportunities to seize these two opportunities and to manage the risks, we need a new mindset. We need the mindset of the young people. We have to trust and to empower them because the pace of change will be exponential. It is change or be changed once again. In all these changes, we have to be guided by our values as expressed in our Olympic Agenda 2020 plus five. Since its adoption in March 2021, it already had a significant impact on the IOC and the wider Olympic movement. This is why a major focus of this session will be a midway evaluation of what we have achieved so far, and we will look ahead at what's, what uh, still needs to be done. In this respect, the Olympic Games Paris 2024 will be an excellent demonstration of the enduring relevance of our values in our times. The athletes, the fans, the entire Olympic community, all of us are looking forward to Paris, which will truly be Olympic Games of a new era. Younger, more inclusive, more urban, more sustainable. The first Olympic Games with full gender parity. The first Olympic Games inspired, planned and delivered in line with our Olympic agenda reforms from start to finish. We all feel great anticipation. Our expectations for these Olympic Games Paris 2024 are shared by billions of people around the globe. After the COVID pandemic, people are longing to come together again. They are longing to celebrate the Olympic spirit together again. Our friends of the Paris 2024 organizing committee are doing a fantastic job at bringing these first Olympic Games of a new era to life in all these dimensions. The slogan, Games Wide Open, is about creating inclusive Olympic Games in all respects. Even spectators will have the opportunity to become participants. This is how we go to where the people are now in the real world. Iconic monuments will be transformed into competition venues, bringing sport into the heart of the city. The public can take part in sports events such as the Marathon pour tous, the Marathon for All, when 40,000 people will be able to run the same marathon route just hours before the Olympic athletes. 
urban sports like sport climbing, skateboarding or braking will feature prominently right in the city center of Paris. Already four years ago, Paris 2024 launched an ambitious program introducing 30 minutes of daily exercise in primary schools throughout France. They are on track to reach more than 4 million children. With its Terre de Jeu initiative, Paris 2024 is promoting sport and physical activity in over 4,000 municipalities across France. Again, taking sport to where the people are. Another significant milestone will be full gender parity at the Olympic Games for the first time in history. The IOC has allocated exactly 50% of the quota places to female athletes and exactly 50% to male athletes. Paris is setting new standards also when it comes to organize sustainable Olympic Games. They are aiming to reduce their emissions by 50% compared to the average emissions of the previous Games. To achieve this, the Games will be powered by 100% of renewable energy. The Games will use 95% existing or temporary venues. With these and other measures, Paris is very much on track to achieve this ambitious goal already six years ahead of the global 2030 target set by the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. In our Olympic Agenda 2020, we are speaking about the uniqueness and the magic of the Olympic Games. So I invite you to imagine for one moment the uniqueness and the magic of the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games Paris 2024. Imagine and dream with me about the spectacular sights as the boats with the athletes float down the River Seine past iconic landmarks, the Eiffel Tower, Notre Dame, the Louvre. Imagine and share the dreams of the athletes. Imagine their emotions when hundreds of thousands of people are welcoming them to the Olympic Games, celebrating them from the riverbanks. Imagine all the people living life in peace. You may say, I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. We all share this dream with the best athletes of the world coming to the Olympic Games Paris 2024. There is not only an overwhelming response from all the athletes, but also from the public. This excitement is reflected in the ticket sales. The requests for tickets go far beyond the 7 million tickets that have already been sold. There is huge demand for the remaining 3 million tickets that are still to be released. People from 180 countries bought tickets so far showing the global appeal of the Olympic Games. The world's political leaders are also voicing their support for the Olympic Games and the values they stand for. The most recent example of this is the declaration of the G20 leaders at their summit here in India. They said, that they, and I quote, look forward 
to the Paris Olympic and Paralympic Games in 2024 as a symbol of peace, dialogue amongst nations and inclusivity with participation of all." End of quote. We are greatly encouraged by this commitment of the G20 leaders for the first time, including the African Union, to the unifying peace mission of the Olympic Games. For this commitment, I would like to thank the host and chair of this G20 summit, the Prime Minister of India, His Excellency Narendra Modi. Dear Prime Minister, we have a certain idea how difficult it is to reach a consensus in these divisive and confrontational times we are living in. Congratulations and thank you, Prime Minister Modi, for your leadership and your great support for the Olympic Games. I would also like to thank the President of France, Emmanuel Macron, for his leadership and full commitment to the success of the Olympic Games Paris 2024. Not only as a not only as a signatory of this G20 declaration, but in particular for his confidence in the IOC to bring the entire world together in peaceful competition. In the same spirit, we know that we can count on our French friends who will inspire us with their great passion for sport. This unifying mission also enjoys the support from the non-aligned movement, which brings together 120 of the 193 UN member states. From so many conversations that I have with people and world leaders around the globe, I know how much they are longing for our unifying force in this highly divided and confrontational world. Our peace mission is more important than ever, with the far too many wars and conflicts that we are witnessing in our world today. So let us all together make these Olympic Games Paris 2024 this symbol of peace dialogue and hope for all humankind. What better place than Paris to showcase Olympic Games of a new era? Paris, the birthplace of our founder, Pierre de Coubertin. Paris, the city of light, Paris, the city of love. As Pierre de Coubertin once said, and I quote him, the Olympic Games are a pilgrimage to the past and an act of faith in the future. The Olympic Games Paris 2024 will be exactly this a pilgrimage to our past in the hometown of our founder and a confident act of faith in our future. In this spirit, we live our new Olympic motto, faster, higher, stronger, together. Thank you very much. Thank you, President Bach. And now, with the greatest joy and respect, I have the honor of inviting the most honorable Prime Minister of India, Mr. Narendra Modi, for his keynote address 
to this August gathering. Are you seeing a president, Mr. Thomas Bach? Are you seeing a Sammanit Sadasya? Sabhi International Sports Federations, Bharat ke National Federations ke sabhi representatives, Devi or Sajjanu. 140 करोड़ भारतीयों की तरफ से आप सभी का इस विशेष आयोजन में मैं स्वागत करता हूं अभिनंदन करता हूं इंटरनेशनल ओलंपिक एसोसिएशन का ये 141वां सेशन भारत में होना बहुत ही खास है 40 साल बाद भारत में आईओसी का सेशन होना हमारे लिए बहुत गौरव की बात है फ्रेंड्स अब से कुछ मिनट पहले ही भारत ने अहमदाबाद में दुनिया के सबसे बड़े स्टेडियम में बहुत ही शानदार जीत दर्ज की है मैं टीम भारत को सभी भारतवासियों को इस ऐतिहासिक जीत की बधाई देता हूं साथियों स्पोर्ट्स भारत में हमारे कल्चर का हमारी लाइफस्टाइल का एक इंपॉर्टेंट हिस्सा रहा है आप भारत के गांवों में जाएंगे तो पाएंगे कि बिना स्पोर्ट्स के हमारा हर फेस्टिवल अधूरा है हम भारतीय सिर्फ स्पोर्ट्स लवर नहीं बल्कि हम स्पोर्ट्स को जीने वाले लोग हैं और ये हजारों वर्षों की हमारी हिस्ट्री में रिफ्लेक्ट होता है इंडस वैली सिविलाइजेशन हो हजारों वर्ष पहले का वैदिक काल हो या उसके बाद का टाइम पीरियड हर कालखंड में स्पोर्ट्स को लेकर भारत की लेगेसी बहुत समृद्ध रही है हमारे यहां हजारों साल पहले लिखे ग्रंथों में 64 विधाओं में पारंगत होने की बात कही जाती है इनमें से अनेक विधाएं खेलों से जुड़ी हुई थी जैसे हॉर्स राइडिंग आर्चरी स्विमिंग रेसलिंग ऐसी अनेक स्किल्स को सीखने पर बल दिया जाता था आर्चरी यानी धनुर विद्या को सीखने के लिए तो पूरी एक धनुर वेद संहिता ही लिखी गई थी इस संहिता में एक जगह कहा गया है धनुष चक्रंच कुतंच खड़गंच छुरी का गदा सप्तमम बाहु युद्धम शादेवम युद्धानि सप्तदा याने विद्या से जुड़ी सात प्रकार की स्किल्स आनी चाहिए जिसमें धनुषवान चक्र 
भाला यानी आज का जेवलिन थ्रो तलवारबाजी ड्रैगर गदा और कुश्ती शामिल है साथियों स्पोर्ट्स की इस हजारों वर्ष पुरानी हमारी लेगेसी के अनेक साइंटिफिक एविडेंस है जहां मुंबई में अभी हम है वहां से करीब 900 किलोमीटर दूर कच्छ में यूनेस्को की वर्ल्ड हेरिटेज साइट है धोलावीरा धोलावीरा पांच हजार साल से भी पहले एक बहुत बड़ा और समृद्ध पोर्ट सिटी हुआ करता था इस प्राचीन शहर में अर्बन प्लानिंग के साथ साथ स्पोर्ट्स इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर का भी एक शानदार मॉडल मिला है खुदाई के दौरान यहां दो स्टेडियम सामने आए हैं इनमें से एक तो दुनिया का सबसे पुराना और उस समय का दुनिया का सबसे बड़ा स्टेडियम है पांच हजार साल पुराने भारत के स्टेडियम में एक साथ दस हजार लोगों के बैठने की कैपेसिटी थी भारत की एक और एंशियन साइट राखी गढ़ी में भी स्पोर्ट्स से जुड़े स्ट्रक्चर्स की पहचान हुई है भारत की ये विरासत पूरे विश्व की विरासत है फ्रेंड्स स्पोर्ट्स में कोई लूजर नहीं होता स्पोर्ट्स में सिर्फ विनर्स और लर्नर्स होते हैं स्पोर्ट्स की लैंग्वेज यूनिवर्सल है स्पिरिट यूनिवर्सल है स्पोर्ट्स सिर्फ कंपटीशन नहीं है स्पोर्ट्स ह्यूमैनिटी को अपने विस्तार का अवसर देता है रिकॉर्ड्स कोई भी तोड़े पूरी दुनिया उसका स्वागत करती है स्पोर्ट्स हमारे वसुधैव कुटुंब कम यानी वन अर्थ वन फैमिली वन फ्यूचर के भाव को भी सशक्त करता है इसलिए हमारी सरकार हर स्तर पर खेल को बढ़ावा देने के लिए पूरी प्रतिबद्धता से काम कर रही है खेलो इंडिया यूनिवर्सिटी गेम्स खेलो इंडिया यूथ गेम्स खेलो इंडिया विंटर गेम्स मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट स्पोर्ट्स कंपटीशन और जल्द आयोजित होने वाले खेलो इंडिया पैरा गेम्स इसके उदाहरण है हम भारत में खेलों के विकास के लिए इंक्लूसिविटी और डायवर्सिटी पर भी लगातार फोकस कर रहे हैं फ्रेंड्स स्पोर्ट्स को लेकर भारत के इसी फोकस के कारण आज भारत इंटरनेशनल इवेंट्स में शानदार प्रदर्शन कर रहा है पिछले ओलंपिक्स में कई भारतीय एथलीट ने बेहतरीन प्रदर्शन किया हाल में संपन्न हुए एशियन गेम्स में भारत ने हिस्टोरिकल परफॉर्मेंस दी है उससे पहले हुए वर्ल्ड यूनिवर्सिटी गेम्स में भी हमारे यंग एथलेट ने नए रिकॉर्ड बनाए हैं ये भारत में बदलते और तेजी से विकसित होते स्पोर्ट्स लैंडस्केप का संकेत है साथियों बीते वर्षों में भारत ने हर प्रकार के 
ग्लोबल स्पोर्ट्स टूर्नामेंट ऑर्गेनाइज करने के अपने सामर्थ्य को साबित किया है हमने हाल ही में चेस ओलंपियाड का आयोजन किया जिसमें विश्व के 186 देश शामिल हुए हमने फुटबॉल अंडर 17 विमेन्स वर्ल्ड कप मेन्स हॉकी वर्ल्ड कप विमेन्स वर्ल्ड बॉक्सिंग चैंपियनशिप और शूटिंग वर्ल्ड कप की भी मेजबानी की भारत हर वर्ष दुनिया की सबसे बड़ी क्रिकेट लीग में से एक का भी आयोजन करता है इस समय भारत में क्रिकेट वर्ल्ड कप भी चल रहा है उत्साह के इस माहौल में सभी लोग ये सुनकर भी खुश हैं कि आईओसी के एग्जीक्यूटिव बोर्ड ने क्रिकेट को ओलंपिक्स में शामिल करने की सिफारिश की है हमें उम्मीद है इस बारे में जल्द ही हमें कोई पॉजिटिव न्यूज सुनने को मिलेगा साथियों ग्लोबल इवेंट्स का आयोजन हमारे लिए दुनिया भर के देशों के स्वागत का मौका होता है तेजी से बढ़ती इकोनॉमी और अपने वेल डेवलप इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर के कारण बड़े ग्लोबल इवेंट्स के लिए भारत तैयार है ये दुनिया ने भारत की जी ट्वेंटी प्रेसिडेंसी के दौरान भी देखा है देश भर के 60 से अधिक शहरों में हमने इवेंट्स ऑर्गेनाइज किए हैं ये लॉजिस्टिक्स से लेकर हर प्रकार की हमारी ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कैपेसिटी का प्रमाण है इसलिए आज मैं आप सबके सामने 140 करोड़ भारतवासियों की भावना जरूर रखना चाहूंगा भारत अपनी धरती पर ओलंपिक्स का आयोजन करने के लिए बहुत उत्साहित है साल 2036 में भारत में ओलंपिक्स का सफल आयोजन हो इसके लिए भारत अपने प्रयासों में कोई कमी नहीं रखेगा ये 140 करोड़ भारतीयों का बरसों पुराना सपना है उनकी आकांक्षा है इस सपने को अब हम आप सबके सहयोग से पूरा करना चाहते हैं और 2036 ओलंपिक से भी पहले भारत साल 2029 में होने जा रहे यूथ ओलंपिक्स की मेजबानी करने को भी इच्छुक है मुझे विश्वास है भारत को आईओसी का निरंतर सहयोग मिलता रहेगा फ्रेंड स्पोर्ट सिर्फ मेडल जीतने का नहीं बल्कि दिलों को जीतने का माध्यम है स्पोर्ट्स सबका है सबके लिए है स्पोर्ट सिर्फ चैंपियंस ही तैयार नहीं करता बल्कि पीस प्रोग्रेस और वेलनेस को भी प्रमोट करता है इसलिए 
स्पोर्ट्स दुनिया को जोड़ने का एक और सशक्त माध्यम है मैं ओलंपिक्स के मोटो को फिर आपके सामने दोहराऊंगा फास्टर हायर स्ट्रांगर टुगेदर आईओसी के एक सौ सेशन में आए सभी अतिथियों का अध्यक्ष थॉमस बाग का और सभी डेलीगेट्स का मैं फिर से हृदय से धन्यवाद करता हूं आने वाले कुछ घंटों में आपको अनेक महत्वपूर्ण फैसले लेने हैं आई नाउ डिक्लेयर दिस सेशन ओपन Thank you honorable prime minister for your inspiring address. We now request the honorable prime minister Mr Narendra Modi and the International Olympic Committee president Mr Thomas Bach to please kindly take their seats in the grand theater with our esteemed dignitaries. My dear friends and distinguished guests,